Have you been using QuickBooks for a little while yet? Undeposited funds? It just doesn't make sense. You are in the right place. Hi, I'm Candice Camfer, and I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence with QuickBooks. And recently I posted on my Instagram a little story about undeposited funds, and you asked me to create an entire video to make it easier for you. So I thought that's exactly what we're gonna do. And before we jump in, if you are looking for the online version, go up above or down below. If you're looking for the desktop version, you are in the right place. Let's jump in. Okay, so I brought along some props. Are you ready for this? Grab a pen and paper so you can take some notes. So undeposit funds in QuickBooks is like a bank bag. Do you remember traditional bank bags where you put in your checks, cash, all of those things, and then you took it to the bank? And because you had everything listed on the deposit slip, it became one deposit, which was easily put on your bank statement to match. Well, that is why QuickBooks created undeposit funds inside of the software, okay? So let me share with you, let's do a little example in QuickBooks so I can show you how undeposit funds works so it can be simple and easy for you moving forward. Let's start here. There are three ways to enter in your income in QuickBooks. The first one is invoices. This gives you accounts receivable. So this is created typically if your customers are going to what? Yes, pay you later, right? So you receive a payment. When you click receive payments, you get to choose. Do you want that payment to go straight to your bank account or do you want it to go to an account called undeposit funds? Now, when you're in here and you're choosing your customer, you are choosing cash or check. You'll notice where is the payment going doesn't show up in this screen right now. Why is that? That it's going to this phantom account called undeposit funds is because it is a preference. Let me actually close this. So if you want to change so you can see exactly where the deposits are going, you're going to go under edit preferences to review your preferences. You're going to go down to payments. There are two types of preferences when you're setting up QuickBooks desktop. There is my preferences, which means you as a user, and there are company preferences that the admin can change. Here under the company preferences receive payments, you can choose a few different options. The one we're talking about today has to do with undeposited funds. So use undeposited funds as the default account. You could actually remove that or check it. If you remove it, we're gonna close all of our windows. So this is a little thing that you may or may not know about. So now when I click receive payments, I have an option for what I wanna to go to. So if you're just doing one quick deposit, you might wanna to go to your bank account. But if you have multiple deposits or you just wanna always have it go to undeposit funds so that you don't ever make mistakes, you can go under edit preferences and change that as a preference. There you go little extra tip for you as well. Every time it will close and you um, all the windows and you will have to be an admin most likely to change that functionality. All right. So first we've learned that when we create an invoice, we receive a payment. When we're receiving the payment, we're choosing where it's going to go. If you are doing a sales receipt, it takes both the invoice and the payment, combines them together, and then it moves it over here to this invisible account right here called, and this is where in my mind, the timeline goes, where the undeposited fund sits right here. And it sits there until you say, okay, I'm actually going to record it to the bank. Okay. So that is this little bank bag that I was showing you that's sitting right here in undeposit funds. Then you click record deposit. When you do that, it's going to pop up anything that's sitting there waiting to be deposited. Now, this is a sample file, so it could be future dated. We're going to go ahead and click OK. Now, you can choose when you click on payments. Maybe you only want one. Nope. It was only that one was for the 40. Or yes, it was both of these and put them together. OK, this is the key. So you're picking the bank account just like normal the date, but you're choosing where it came from. You don't want to come in here and manually choose undeposit funds. You always want to use the feature of payments within QuickBooks to make that work the best. There you go. Uh, save and close or save and new. All right. So you get to choose which one that you want. Save and close is going to close it. You're done. Save and new means I'm going to have another deposit to do. So let's just say that we said there's only one. Click OK. Save and new. Then it will pop it up and we'll do the next one and then do it. OK. So it just depends on what actually happened to your bank. You click save and close. Now when you go to the check register, you'll find your deposit in there and you can look at it that way. Now, one thing, a couple things that I want to share with you. If when you click on record deposit, you have many different right now, I won't have any because I already shared it, but you have a lot of old undeposited funds, but you've been reconciling, then most likely you have mistakes. That's something you'd like help with. I'd recommend checking out QuickBooks Simplified every single month. I do live training on how to clean up mistakes inside of that community. And if you'd like to learn more about it, I'm actually going to be hosting a cleaning up your QuickBooks workshop. It's a free training 
that you can learn to figure out if you even have mistakes to begin with. So check that out. You can go to canscamper.com forward slash cleanup. I'll put the link here for you to register for the free training. So if you find that you have a lot of undeposited fund mistakes, two things can happen. One, you could have duplicated your income. So when you went to do your taxes, if you're already reconciled, but you have those sitting there, most likely you've duplicated it. The other issue could be that you haven't been reconciling, which is something you want to do every single month, which is comparing QuickBooks to your bank statement. So make sure you're doing that. Okay. If you haven't been doing that, go back and get started with it. All right. Let me know if this helped you. You guys asked for a training on undeposited funds, a more in-depth training. So now you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to hear. Leave in the comments. What was your biggest aha? Was it about undeposited funds? Was it how they work, that they're a bank bag? About the edit preference settings? Let me know. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our future tips. And give this a thumbs up so more QuickBooks users see it. If you're thinking, mm, I would love to get those uh, tips and tricks in your inbox, go up above or down below and we'll start sending to you directly. And if you, when I mentioned that I'm hosting a Cleaning Up QuickBooks workshop, you thought, mm, I'd love to see what mistakes you might have in your QuickBooks or that you don't have any as well, don't forget to register at CandiceCamper.com forward slash cleanup. I look forward to seeing you inside our next tip and trick. Have an amazing day.